Hi and welcome to this video. My name is Dave Hedeman. I'm the application specialist for the steel segment here at Trimble. And today we're doing part three of our organizer video series. Uh, in the first video, we talked about just the basics of using the organizer. In the second video, we talked about these categories, creating custom categories, um, customizing the existing categories. Um, in this video, we're going to be talking about these reports over here on the object browser portion of the organizer. We talked a little bit in the previous videos about how when you select something like the steel assemblies category, you get an assembly list. If you select the bolt groups, you get a bolt group check. These uh, templates, these reports that you see over here, they are uh, environment specific. So these are the ones that are set up in the US Imperial environment. If you're using a different environment, you'll probably just have a different list of available templates to you. But what we're going to talk about is how you can modify these or customize them uh, create a new one if you want and you can do that by coming up here and clicking on the settings button in the organizer so once I open the settings I can see right here on my first tab these are the uh, property templates it's currently showing me the assembly list um, I have something typed in here in the properties to show that these are all of the available variables, um, all of the available properties that I could use and then over on the right side these are the different columns that are currently being shown so in my assembly list, I have, a, um, I have a quantity column, and then I have a mark column, and then I have a profile column. So this is really all you're doing, is you're going to create a separate entry for each column that you wanted to see. So you can simply go ahead and remove these columns by clicking on an X if you wanted to, and it would go ahead and update this report. But what we're going to do is we're going to uh, customize one by creating from scratch, just so you can see what that process looks like. Now a topic that we've been covering a lot lately here is the concept of ESTA modeling, uh, using your Tecla model for estimating your project. So we're going to create a report that maybe an estimator might want to use um, with information that is critical to them. So what I can do is come up here and click this plus template button. What that's going to do is give me the opportunity to make a new template. I can either do it based on the current template, or I can go ahead and create a blank template. Um, I'm going to use the blank option, so I'm going to just call this Material List, and then click Create. And now I have a new Material List template being shown, and as you can see, there's one empty column. So uh, what I can do is start dragging properties over to the column side. So maybe some things I might want to bring in are my profile. So I can see there is profile and then all this other information about profiles that I could bring in. Now, if I'm using the categories, remember in the earlier videos we talked about these categories can select at the assembly level or the part level. I'm currently using an assembly level uh, category so I gotta make sure that my template is built for that so if I just tried dragging over profile that actually wouldn't work because profile is not a property of an assembly uh, it's made up of multiple profiles what we want is the main part profile so I'm gonna actually do a search here for main part and then I'm gonna scroll down until I find main part dot profile so once I have that I can go ahead and drag this over and drop and as soon as I drop, you can see it's going to update to show me that uh, it's, it's showing the main part profile information and it's also giving me a column header, which maybe I might want to simplify and just call that out as profile. Now, you may not see the results right away. Sometimes you will, sometimes you won't. If you don't and you want to see and make sure that your, your uh, column is going to work properly, you have the right property, you might want to go ahead and hit modify here, which is kind of like save, and then you can close out of the settings and simply refresh your object browser. So here we can see now it's listing out the profile. It looks like it's listing my joists first, so let's focus maybe on the beams and uh, go back to my material list. So here there's all my 8x10s, and if I start scrolling down, there's 828s, 10x12s, and so on. So that value is working. So let's go back to my settings, and let's start to add some more columns. Maybe I want to bring in the uh, length. I'll, bring it, I'll just do straight up length of the overall assembly. So we'll just drag that down here, and if I drop it in this blank area, I can... Uh, simply create a new column header by drag and drop. So it's very straightforward and very easy to use. So some other things I might want to bring in are going to be the weight. So let's bring in the weight. 
Maybe I want to bring in the material grade. Again, material grade is going to be specific to the main part. So let's go back to main part and search for main part. I'll do dot material. Uh, let me go ahead and change that column header. We'll just call that material. And, um, you know, we could keep doing this. We keep going through and adding more information. So what if I wanted to do something a little bit different here? So obviously I'm pulling in different properties, but I can also create different types of custom formulas and custom properties. So let's take a look at those real quick. Um, if I wanted to make a custom formula, let's say, again, thinking from like an estimate standpoint, I have my main material that's usually modeled from center to center, and then we have usually some type of setback created, either by auto connection or applying components or applying fittings to the end. What if I wanted to know how much was being removed? What if I wanted to know the remainder, that extra material that was being lost, or our waste material? Let me go ahead and see if I can create one of those. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and call this waste material. And then we can start to drag properties over here um, to, to kind of do the math for us. As you can see, we have mathematical operators in here, like adding, subtracting, dividing, multiplying. Uh, so as an example, I'm looking at the overall length. All right, so I want the, uh, the length gross of my parts. But you know what? I need this of the main part. So let me take a step back here. Let's go with main part length. And I'll bring in main part length gross. Um, but that's the after fittings are applied. That's after the, the primary cuts have been applied to the piece. So I need to subtract this from an overall handle length. Well, handle length isn't a, uh, isn't a value that I can pull from. That, that's not a thing in the, in the default uh, system properties. So what we've created in the US is a series of extra properties called US custom variables that I already have installed. So maybe I want to pull that in here. So let me go ahead and do a search for custom. And here I can see there's custom dot uh, volume, custom dot cuts. Here's custom dot handle length. So this is a custom property that I've added to my system already. But um, I'm already running into another problem. I'm grabbing these objects at an assembly level. So custom dot handle length is a part property. What I need is a main part dot custom dot handle length. But if I come in here and I try to do a search for that main part dot custom, I can see that I don't have that. So I need to take a step back here and I need to create a custom property to use in my custom formula. So let me back up. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and just say create, so that way I do get that simple uh, report made. But let's go and create a custom property. Um, so I'm going to call this main part handle length, because that's really what I'm looking for. Having trouble spelling today. Um, so my property is going to be main part dot, and then the custom dot handle underscore length, which I know because, uh, like I said, I've already installed the US custom variables, which I'll include a link of that in the description if you don't have those yet. And then this is going to be a length type property. So I've defined what this property is. I've given it a unique name and I'm going to go ahead and say OK. And I can actually find that now if I look for my main part there's main part handle length. So there's the property that I just defined. Well, let's come in here and go to my custom formula. Oh, actually, I actually want to edit that existing custom formula. So that's that was called waste material. So I'm going to right click and edit that. And then we're going to pull in my main part handle length. And my waste material is going to be the main part handle length minus the main part gross length that's that's left. Um, so let me go ahead and say this is going to be a length type and say apply. And uh, let's go ahead and pull that in now to my column. So I'm going to grab waste material, the formula, drag and drop it. So now I have a new waste material column. 
And you can see that it's already calculating some stuff. So I've got some inch and a quarter setbacks, some inch and a half setbacks. So that's the remainder of my handles minus my fittings. So you can do that same type of thing. Obviously, these um, these formulas, the, they're not very... Uh, not super complicated, you know, obviously um, it's just addition, subtraction, multiplication, that kind of thing, but you can create groups using parentheses, so you do have some basic uh, kind of algebra functions that you can do here, um, but you can use this to create some pretty powerful, pretty detailed reports. Now, if you wanted to go above and beyond this, you start looking at template editor territory, and that's a totally different video and lesson. But I hope you find this uh, this helpful, um, you know, to create your own reports. As you may remember from the previous video, these do export then as Excel spreadsheets. Um, so when you're done, you would just come in here and hit modify against kind of your save function. And now you can use that report, that property template on any one of these categories that you wish. Again, I hope you find this helpful. As always, thanks for watching. And if you do have any suggestions for other tips and tricks videos, go ahead and leave those in the comments down below.